ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂದಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಾಖಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರಂದಿರೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಿ ಫಿನಿಶ್ ಟೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಝೀರೋ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಅಹಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನಂತಮಸ್ತುಜ್ಞಾನೀಪೇನಸ್ವತಾಶಯಾಮ್ಯಾತ್ಮಭಾವಸ್ತುಜ್ಞಾನದೀಪ
only by devotional service is the supreme truth krishna pleased and by his inconceivable energy he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee so this is the most critical thing only by devotional service is krishna pleased and by his when he is pleased by his inconceivable energy he can reveal himself <clears throat> he has to reveal himself we cannot uh, force enter goloka <clears throat> The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart, and with the presence of Krishna, we just like the sun. The darkness of ignorance is at once dissipated. Pure devotee <clears throat> always has Krishna within his heart. This is the special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. What is the special mercy? That this darkness of ignorance is removed. But pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. <clears throat> That means that he cannot think about anything apart from Krishna. due to the contamination of material association through many many millions of births one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism but when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants hare krishna the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge and this is we can experience this <clears throat> our heart is always covered with dust of materialism something or the other material if it is around us we are very happy otherwise if we have to drop all that and only chant hare krishna or engage in devotional service we will not be attracted so much because there's nothing it's nothing material <coughs> so when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants hare krishna the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge so the whole key key here is constantly chanting hare krishna if we constantly chant hare krishna then you know we can experience this dust getting cleared otherwise dust just keeps getting accumulated and we do things such that dust will increase hmm? the ultimate goal vishnu can be attained only by this chant and by devotional service and not by mental speculation or argument the pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life he need, <coughs> he need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart everything is provided automatically by the supreme lord who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee this is the essence of the teachings of bhagavad gita mm. <clears throat> so when he removes the darkness from his heart so for removing the darkness what is the criteria here he is always has krishna within his heart uh, <coughs> how do we always have krishna within the heart by always chanting hare krishna so if you are chanting hare krishna all the time then krishna will be in the heart the dust will clear and uh, then one need not be anxious and krishna provides everything <coughs> by studying bhagavad gita one can become a soul completely surrendered to the supreme lord and engage himself in pure devotional service as a lord takes charge one becomes completely free from all kind of materialistic endeavors so if you are still engaging materially that means that we can clearly understand that the lord has not taken charge because as the lord takes charge then we give up materialistic endeavors mm. <coughs> that is very nice actually the purport <clears throat> why the few duty does not have to worry about necessities uh, because when he removes darkness in the heart everything is provided automatically by the lord mm. so how chanting constant thinking constant chanting constant thinking about krishna <clears throat> removes all the darkness <clears throat> and when all the darkness is removed then krishna provides for everything we don't have to worry very beautiful any questions very
nice purport okay param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam madam vibhum ahustvam rishas sarve devar shirnarata stata asito devalo vyasa swayam chaiva pravishime <coughs> Arjuna said, okay, can somebody read, please? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Arjuna said, you are the supreme personality of God at the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, and vyasa confirm this truth about you and now you yourself are declaring it to me Papa. actually uh, krishna has did not reveal these things in as many words <clears throat> but this is arjuna's realization after hearing the conversation <coughs> okay perfect in these two verses the supreme lord gives a chance to the mayavadi philosopher for here it is clear that the supreme is different from the individual soul arjuna after hearing the essential four verses of bhagavad gita in this chapter <clears throat> became completely free from all doubts and accepted krishna as the supreme personality of godhead he at once boldly declares you are paramam you are param brahma the supreme personality of godhead and previously krishna stated that he is the originator of everything and every one every demigod and every human being is dependent on him men and demigods out of ignorance think that they are absolute and independent of the supreme personality of godhead that ignorance is removed perfectly by the discharge of the de- devotional service this has already been explained in the previous verse by the lord now by his grace arjuna is accepting him as the supreme truth and uh, in accordance with the vedic injunction it is not that because uh, krishna is arjuna's intimate friend arjuna is flattering him by calling him the supreme personality of god at the absolute truth whatever arjuna says in these two verses is confirmed by vedic truth vedic, vedic in- basically shruti upanishads yeah yeah <clears throat> Vedic injunctions affirm that only one who takes to devotional service to the supreme lord can understand him whereas others cannot each and every word of this verse spoken by arjuna is confirmed by vedic injunction in the kena upanishad it is stated that the supreme Brahm, brahman is the rest for everything and krishna has already explained that everything is resting on him the mundaka upanishad confirms that the supreme lord in whom everything is resting can be realized only by those who engage constantly in thinking of him this constant thinking of krishna is smaranam one of the methods of devotional service it is only by devotional service to krishna that one can understand his position and get rid of this material body mm. in the vedas the supreme lord is accepted as the purest of the pure one who understands that krishna is the purest of the pure can become purified from all sinful activities one cannot be disinfected from sinful activities unless he surrenders unto the supreme lord arjuna's acceptance of krishna as the supreme pure compi- complies with the injunctions of vedic literature this is also confirmed by great personalities of whom narada is the chief mm. krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and one should always meditate upon him and enjoy one's transcendental relationship with him he is the supreme existence he is free from bodily needs birth and death not only does arjuna confirm this but all the vedic literatures the puranas and histories in all vedic literatures krishna is thus described and the supreme lord himself also says in the fourth chapter although i am unborn i appear to this earth to establish religious principles he is the supreme origin he has no cause for he is the cause of all causes and everything is emanating from him this perfect knowledge can be had by the grace of the <coughs> sorry yeah 
here arjuna expresses himself though uh, through the grace of krishna if we want to understand bhagavad gita we should accept the statements in these two verses <coughs> this is called the parampara system acceptance of the disciplic succession unless one is in the disciplic succession he cannot understand bhagavad gita it is not possible by so called academic education unfortunately those proud of their academic education despite so much evidence in vedic literatures stick to their obstinate conviction that krishna mm-hmm. is an ordinary person yeah so actually even these purports right i mean actually we cannot understand them first time we read <coughs> we, only, we only understand some part of it right and as we continue reading more and more slowly and steadily we understand <clears throat> because this knowledge also is revealed to us only through devotion devotional service as we engage more in krishna service the more opads uh, purports are also revealed mm. so understanding krishna is only by seven mukhe jivado so i may was puratyada so he has to reveal himself Mm, some very nice points here also <clears throat> dropa is saying here that mm, one cannot be disinfected from sinful activities unless he surrenders unto the supreme lord <clears throat> and surrendering unto the supreme lord means surrendering unto uh, bona fide representative guru mm, mm, so that's important Mm. one who understands that krishna is the purest of the pure can become purified from all sinful activities <coughs> so these things also we might not be able to completely realize the power of these statements uh, <coughs> but we will understand slowly and steadily we mm. one should always meditate upon him always meditate upon him and enjoy one's transcendental relationship with him you know again this is not for us at this point of time mm. when we come to that stage of actually knowing our swarupa then we will constantly meditate in that and enjoy that relationship we have with him uh, but for now we have to just simply chant hare krishna as much as possible mm. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Sarvameta dhritam manye yanmam vadasi keshava nahi te bhagavan vyaktim vidur deva deva nadana vaha Okay, can somebody please read? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Uh, oh Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Neither the demigods nor the demons, oh Lord, can understand your personality. So, for a quote, Arjuna herein confirms that persons of faithless and demonic nature cannot understand Krishna. He is not known even by the demigods. So what to speak of the so-called scholars? of this modern world yeah so called scholars because actually demigods are very elevated uh, literally they know everything about this material world to the extent that is required to manage it now scholars of this modern world proper is using the word so called actually because what knowledge they have is not real knowledge <clears throat> actually all the demigods know very clearly who they are what is their relationship with krishna so they have real knowledge even they cannot understand krishna so what to speak of so called scholars because they think that they are scholars but they don't even know who they are that i am atma i am not this body even that basic knowledge they don't have so how can they understand krishna okay so by the grace of the supreme lord arjuna has understood that the supreme truth is krishna 
and that he is the perfect one one should therefore follow the path of arjuna he received the authority of bhagavad gita as described in the fourth chapter the parampara system of disciplic succession for the understanding of bhagavad gita was lost and therefore krishna reestablished that disciplic succession with arjuna because he considered arjuna his intimate friend and a great devotee therefore as stated in our introduction to gita upanishad bhagavad gita should be understood in the parampara system when the parampara system was lost arjuna was selected to rejuvenate it the acceptance by arjuna of all that krishna says should be emulated then we can understand the essence of bhagavad gita and then only we can understand that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead yeah. <coughs> <coughs> acceptance by krishna acceptance by arjuna of all that krishna says should be emulated it means that we should also accept whatever krishna has said and only when we accept whatever is krishna has said we can understand the essence of bhagavad gita then only we can understand that krishna is supreme person about it so accepting each and everything that is stated in bhagavad gita not just translation purport everything is very important and we don't do selective hearing <clears throat> i like this so i'll accept i don't like this so i'll reject and then we cannot understand bhagavad gita we cannot understand krishna hmm <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, so we, see we should understand what we are trying to achieve uh, what we are trying to achieve we are trying to achieve what normal demigods neither demigods nor demons can hmm? which is to understand krishna it's not a simple task hmm? it's a herculean task and it is possible only by full surrender and it's not possible it doesn't happen because of our ability it just happens because of our surrender because of our faith because of our commitment hmm? and then we can understand krishna as he is so when we when we hear things like this you know we should initially when i used to read such statements i used to wonder <coughs> <coughs> you demigods only cannot understand krishna what can i understand krishna and i started realizing saying that actually the path that propad has given us if we actually stick to it we kind of somewhat become in that way we crop go beyond demigods because we come to the path of pure devotional service which is not something that demigods are following where demigods are not following pure devotional service so they cannot understand krishna but if we follow pure devotional service path of pure devotional service then we will in that sense surpass demigods in terms of understanding krishna right that is why devotees are considered superior to even demigods hmm? and that is the reason we don't worship <coughs> <coughs> demigods and devotees in the same altar hmm? so we should not worship demigods and devotees in the same altar because they are actually of different caliber category altogether <coughs> and krishna actually Uh, while krishna obviously protects demigods because they are taking care of his creation but he has special affinity for his devotees mm. he also has affinity for demigods for the reason that they are maintaining his like, creation but he has like uh, beyond this creation you know uh, he has that real affection for his devotees real love for his devotees mm. so yeah we we are trying to kind of cross go beyond demigods and demons as well you know in our search um, to understand krishna <clears throat> we should feel happy that you know we are trying something which is so exalted and then we also know anything which is very exalted very difficult requires effort commitment we should be ready to give our commitment <coughs> then we can achieve the goal okay i think my throat is not allowing me to speak more so <clears throat> we'll stop here and if anybody has any questions so if you finish 11 to 14 okay <clears throat> yeah
Any questions? As usual, I'm hoping that everybody is doing your <coughs> daily reading. <coughs> Do bhakti <coughs> when your body supports it. Hmm? Yeah, doing live demonstration of how difficult it is to even speak of Krishna you know, when your body doesn't support. So when body is in good shape, please do as much bhakti as possible. Hmm? We don't have any control over what is going to hit us when. Till we come to very pure stages when you know Krishna will personally take care of things for us but this point of time we don't know what karma phala will hit us when and everything that happens will only make it difficult for us to do bhakti <clears throat> but most of us unfortunately when everything is good we invest so much time and energy in at work mm. thinking that we're going to get something out of it or I don't know, I mean, we really think about it or we just simply naturally engage in more, spending more time at work. <coughs> Actually, it should be the other way around. Everything is good. Work is peaceful, stable, etc., etc. Just engage in more bhakti. Because when the body conks, then it's really difficult. Mm. Anyway, this is experience. <laughs> Arnath Prabhu, you are saying something? <clears throat> like, um, just don't like uh, understanding is possible only by surrendering. So we are actually like uh, reading and trying to understand more. Like, yeah. So that is that only like will the faith and the purification. Like mm -hmm. No, no, no. See, we are not reading like Gnanis. Mm, we are reading, but at the same time, we are engaging in devotional service. Mm, so we are we are on the process of surrender. We are all we are all surrender to different extents, depending on our faith in Krishna and Guru. Mm. <clears throat> so our reading is actually supporting our surrender. So when we read our surrender, our faith increases. We surrender more, and this is required for us so that you know we can completely surrender and completely surrender. Krishna takes control, <coughs> full control. Sure, thank you. Hmm? Uh, looks like Anu Prabhu got initiated as Haranath Kaur Prabhu. No, 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 Harish oh. Prabhu. Harish Prabhu. Okay, the voice. Sounds similar, so mm -hmm. not, not it. They are there on the verge, but still not there. Mm. Bro, I had a question. Um, mm -hmm. In the previous uh, verse, it was written. Propat was writing that uh, material endeavor should stop, right? And, and mm. uh, so, like we are in the process of surrendering. Maybe the full surrender will take some time, right? Why? Why will like, it take time? In terms of uh, our faith, for example, we are fully surrendered, but uh, we might not be having purified senses, right? Uh, no, 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 one second, one second. Let's not mean words. Fully surrendered means fully surrendered. There's no but after that. One uh, is fully surrendered, he's fully surrendered. Fully but, surrendered doesn't mean that there is any imperfection. But the propensity to do sinful activities might still... They're not fully surrendered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So You're in the process of fully surrendering. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So in the process of fully surrendering till, mm. till that phase is there, mm. the material endeavors can continue or even that stage also we can quit material endeavors. I mean, in the sense that we will do our prescribed duties mm. and emergency duties, but not endeavoring more for material... Actually. That we should do. That we should try. Yeah. Anytime we try. I mean, we don't. We don't wait for any of these, any, any stage for <coughs> all this. <laughs> it's a. It's just the faith in Krishna. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. See, uh, completely pure devotees, they don't even bother about their maintenance. I mean, in where food is going to come, will they get food, etc. They don't bother, bother about it. We might not be at that stage, right? But at least what stage we should come to is, okay, I'm doing my work. I don't really care what comes out of it. Let me just do my work. I'm going to do as minimum as is required based on the position that I am based on whatever money I'm being paid. So I do justice to that and that's it. And I draw the line. That is the end of our material endeavor. Right? That much endeavor is expected for a grihastha to run the family. So <clears throat> Varnashram allows eight hours of work and that's it. More than eight hours is over endeavor. Mm-hmm. Now, having said that, if one works for eight hours, he's only going to get as much money he's going to get, right? But if today, <clears throat> if somebody's paying us a lot more money and that extra money being paid is expecting us to work for 10 hours, we might have to do that. Now, <clears throat> does it mean we should continue with that? No. Anukulesa Sankalpa Pratikulesa Sabadinam. Ideally, you give up that kind of job and move into a job which will allow you to only, say, work for eight hours at whatever pace you want to and still take care of your responses. That means you get paid, etc. But you focus on bhakti. Mm -hmm. Hmm? And uh, these things are, uh, I mean, these additions are are guidance or direction, instruction given by spiritual master. (laughs) (laughs) Some cases, for example, I know Bhakti Vikas Maharaj in some cases has allow devotees to do PhD, go to US uh, because there was opportunity to earn more money because he understood that, okay, these devotees are not going to get stuck anywhere. So it's a it's a very much case on case by case basis. So for some uh, guru might say work more, for some might say don't work at all, give up. Right? It, but if we are surrendered, only then we'll go to guru and say, okay, Guru Maharaj, I'm here, I'm this is my position, what should I do? But we are afraid. We are afraid. If you go to Guru and Guru says stop work and I am not ready for it, now what will happen? Uh, so, you know, we are not fully surrendered. If we are fully surrendered, then we will simply follow what Guru is saying and we perfect our life. If he says stop endeavor, we will stop endeavor. If he says no continue endeavor, we will continue endeavor. Mm-hmm. See, this yeah. is another very important thing. Actually, most devotees think that all their decisions are independent. Actually, none of zero. Diksha Kale Bhakta Kare Atma Samarpan. At the time of initiation, we surrender our freedom to Guru. <clears throat> we should only take decisions from Guru after that. Yeah. Not independent. But we should have the faith for that. Go to Guru. Mm-hmm. Guru might say whatever he thinks is best for us. <clears throat> and we will think, no, 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 Guru Maharaj doesn't understand me. Guru Ravagya. Sadhu Ninda, in some sense. So, all, all Nama Pradas will do. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so, we should develop faith. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Any other thoughts, questions? Okay. Fine. So we'll end here. Krishna uh, willing, hopefully <coughs> my throat will get better. Uh, continue on Friday. Hmm? Thank you very much for your time. On Chakalpatrubya Chakrapasin Bya Chapatita Nam Pawani Bivishnuman Maha. Some Vita Gaurabhaktam Dikichai Hare Krishna. Thank you.